So bad development. I'll show you a close up early, later, but we have two holes in this nut and I found three grubs crawling around. I don't see any others on any other nuts, but this is the first case of weevils that I've had in the orchard. I don't know if it's chestnut weevil or from oaks. I've never left any chestnuts on the ground uh, to, for them to have a life cycle, but obviously they get in there somehow. And there are definitely some chestnut trees about a mile away. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna cut this open. If we zoom in here and see what kind of damage the two things did to the nuts. The nut still feels solid, but three grubs have climbed out of these two holes. And I can already see there's like a grub. Can you see that? Where a grub crawled. So a lot of times, from what I'm told, the seed is still viable. It's just people aren't very tolerant of eating worms. See the, the trail? That is not good. So the trail climbed right to the hole. Oh, here's a deeper hole. Let's get this peeled all the way. See that hole? And then here's another hole. Let's break it open. Looks like a brain. Doesn't that look like a brain? So there's the hole, the cavity, I guess, that it was inserted into as an egg. The nut, you can see, still has viable parts, but who wants to eat that? So let's talk about weevils. There's two different types of weevils, chestnut weevils. There's the lesser and the large. The lesser is a bigger problem uh, where I'm at, uh, but the large chestnut weevil also has a presence. The chestnut weevil has a two or a three year life cycle. The lesser one's more of a variable. The large one's more confined to that two year life cycle. And it starts out with the adult emerging from the soil there's two hatches. So I'm reading from some information here from Michigan State University. So the, the adult emerges from the soil. There's two hatches, one right around blossom time. So that in my area in Northwest Pennsylvania is in early July or late June, late June, early July. It can be a little earlier or later, depending on where you are south, it'll be a little sooner. Those weevils can be visible they're visible to the naked eye feeding on the blossoms and then they it's not really known what happens do they go back in the soil that seems unlikely or do they go elsewhere to feed and then a second emergence from the soil happens right as the burrs start to mature and uh, at, when that happens they do the majority of their egg laying so they have a long proboscis which can allow them to basically alight on the spurs or the, or the spiny, spiky portions of the burr and can insert underneath the outer exterior, that brutal needle cut, you know, covering that it has and get in there and lay their eggs. And those eggs take about 10 days. Some places say five days, some sources I've seen say 10 days, but five to 10 days later, the egg hatches and the grub uh, the, or the weevil worm uh, starts to move around inside the nut and feed on the kernel. Then uh, it's kind of again there's some mystery around exact what happens but uh, some sources say that while the burr is still in the tree the weevil can emerge and drop to the soil and dig into the soil. Others say that it waits until the burr falls, the nuts roll out and the weevil emerges at that time, kind of that as like a door dinner bell, time to move to the soil when it feels the percussion of hitting the ground. Not real sure which is correct there, but there's competing information on that. Maybe both are true, but in any event, the weevil emerges, goes into the soil, lives the first winter as the 
the larva, the, the worm that you know of, and then pupates into a mature form and still lives in the inside the soil for a second or a third year, depending on different factors, and then emerges and goes back up and completes a cycle. So, uh, so after that's about two to three weeks after hatching that that happens, that the timing of that is set up. So most will overwinter as the larva, then the second winter they'll be more into the mature form. The next year they emerge in the summer, spring or summer, go up and do the leg, egg laying and complete the cycle. So how do you consider managing these in your orchard? Well, there's three different ways. You can do management practices, so like your cultural practices. That can include if they're emerging once they hit the soil, if you pick up chestnuts every single day, uh, some people say every two to three days, but really it seems like it's gotta be every single day because I pick up every two to three days and it's already showing up. So every single day you gotta be able to pick them up off the ground. Now that falls apart when squirrels move in and they take some of your nuts off in the middle of the night or something else does and they're cached away and then the weevil is able to escape for that nut and then you, you have it completely interrupted the life cycle. Also, if it's emerging while it's still in the tree, well, then you're having that problem that they're emerging before you can even get to them. Uh, again, I, re I remove all of mine early because I wanna pick them up more at once and just let them mature at once I've harvested them. Uh, but that just doesn't work because some of the birds won't fall uh, until later. So that's a cultural practice of keeping the forest floor real, real short grass so you can see all the nuts, so you don't miss any, uh, and then to remove everything quickly. I've read about other people in, introducing animals to I mean, guinea fowl, uh, sheep, you know, lots of things to keep the grass low or to eat the grubs, but again, you run into problems if you want to sell nuts and there's things uh, leaving feces in the area, then you have problems with uh, your seeds being able to be sold as edible nuts. So that's a problem you have to think of. Another way of controlling, we've talked about cultural practices, uh, forest floor management and harvesting management. The other is chemical. You can use sprays. Carbaryl, to my knowledge, is the only one with a label for chestnut weevils. They recommend four sprays once a week, uh, depending on the timing, maybe from as early as late July, but it may be August through September. And I think in my area, it would really be more effective mid-August through early September, but you don't want to spray right before you harvest either. So uh, other resources, Route 9 Cooperative, Greg Miller, he recommends two sprays about two weeks apart, uh, sometimes as far as a month apart, but uh, like mid-August and then September 1st is kind of what he recommended on one of his videos. Uh, and he, runs a pretty good sized chestnut orchard cooperative. Um, so four sprays versus two sprays. Of course, you're spending money. Now you're using chemicals. Again, it depends on how you're running your chestnuts, but people have very low tolerance for biting into a nut and finding worms. It's almost zero tolerance. And if you're over 5% tolerance uh, uh, of your nuts infected, well, then you're really fighting a big uphill battle. And the final way to control these is a post-harvest treatments. So we talked about cultural practices, chemical, now it's post-harvest. Post-harvest, you can gather up all the nuts and within a few days, or as soon as you possibly can, sink them in a hot water bath. It's basically a giant sous vide. If you've ever cooked with one of those, an S-O-U-S-V-I-D-E, sous vide. It can, it's like a hot water bath, uh, but it's 118 degrees for a total of 20 minutes, 1 to 18 Fahrenheit, for 20 minutes, that allows you to cook the weevil before it's even visible really to the naked eye. Uh, and you can really control what your customer has because they don't even know it. And if you don't know it's in there, you know, there's no harm, no foul. It doesn't affect the taste. You can't ch see it. And you can really limit uh, the, the harm to the nut as well and can remain commercially viable for selling seed nuts. Uh, the 118 degree Fahrenheit is very important. Any, any less than that 
and you won't kill the weevil and you're wasting your time. Any more than that, you're cooking the nut and now the, the nut is not any good. So they really, in the videos I've watched, and I'll post some links, they really pay very close attention to that. If the circulator on the uh, hot water treatment gets clogged and the temperature starts going over even one degree, two degrees, if it gets up 120, they raise it up out and figure out what's going on because otherwise you're, you're gonna kill the weevil, but you're gonna kill the nut as being a viable seed to grow future trees or to eat uh, because you've cooked the nut. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of a little background on the life cycle of the chestnut weevil, the lesser and the large. So I'm left at a kind of a crossroads here, which I knew was coming, but I'm really disheartened. I, I followed what I had read, which was pick up nuts every two to three days, don't leave any waste on the orchard floor. And I imagine my chestnut weevil problem would be a problem much later down the road when it when it when the harvest became so large that I wouldn't be able to control it. But there are very mature chestnut trees within a mile, mile and a half that I know of. There may be others closer. As far as I know, we don't have any wild chestnuts, but it's possible. Uh, uh, you know, residuals of the American chestnut. Uh, but they got there somehow. And you know, I've always been very careful never to bring any seeds or nuts from you've seen me do the Asbury Woods Chestnut Orchard. They definitely have weevils. I'm gonna post a picture of that here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I really practice careful uh, so that I'm in management, so I'm not bringing from one to the other and never visit them on the same days, never bring seeds into that area. I've never grown a tree from there. Uh, so, you know, they came from somewhere and probably on wings. They have wings, I'm guessing they came by wing. So what do I do next? It's a big decision because, you know, this is not my main, main line of work and I don't want it to become a overbearing load to where it's more work than it is fun uh, because this is really more of a hobby even though I'm running it as a business and we do sell chestnut seedlings and we do want to sell seeds uh, so and for eating. So I've got to make decisions here over the winter of how I'm going to go about managing these in, in the near term and the long term because if they're unchecked they will take over the orchard so my plans at this point in time is I will given that my harvest right now is small I'm definitely going to do the post harvest treatment the the hot water the 118 Fahrenheit uh, then we're gonna have to make a decision on what we're doing I've already done the good cultural practice so the one I haven't done is chemical so I've got to make a decision on, am I going to introduce chemicals? You know, I've done fertilizer. I'm not against any uh, chemicals. I'm not a, uh, a rabid anti-chemical person, but I prefer to avoid it. I mean, I have used glyphosate in, in other parts of the farm intermittently for food plots and so forth, although I prefer not to use that and I try to limit the use. Sometimes I've been forced to use it uh, for lack of effective other methods, but I may have to look into getting a sprayer. Here's a picture of a sprayer, a little quick video clip. I'll post a link to that video. This is one that was posted uh, uh, and gives an example. It doesn't show the actual spraying, but a sprayer where it upward sprays into the canopy as you go down between the rows. And that can get expensive. So we're looking to somehow figure out what's next. I don't want to abandon the orchard and I don't want to abandon it as a business, but I also don't want it to overwhelm me with time. So time is the most valuable commodity, right? It's the most expensive and you never get it back. So that's gonna be what I'm gonna be pondering over the winter is I've already done cultural practices. I've, I've only just practiced with the heat treatment, uh, but I may have to get with a couple clever friends and figure out how to come up with a heat treatment that I can do larger quantities with, and then make a decision. What are the next steps for Lake Erie chestnuts? So anyway, I appreciate you following me throughout my journey. Again, I don't know all the right answers and this is just me learning and there was a 
a parsity, a very small amount of information about this on the internet when I started, and that's what I'm just trying to share. So thanks for following me here at Lake Ear Chestnuts. Remember to like and subscribe. Remember, if you're not growing, you're dying.